You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Mark Unfiltered by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, over the weekend, uh, the folks who Revolt had a summit that took place uh, in Atlanta on that particular panel. It was a host of people who were on there, moderated by Jeff Johnson, included Katrina Pearson and Candace Owens, two Trump supporters, as well as Killer Mike and T.I. as well, and Tamika Mallory. And so it was quite interesting because, first of all, a lot of people on social media were talking about it uh, this weekend, this whole, you know, in terms of how everything uh, panned out. And so I said, you know what? Um, Let's chat about it. First off, though, I want to play you uh, a portion of that conversation where things got a wee bit heated. And because what I want to deal with is the issue, do we really need to engage crazy black conservatives? You know, black conservatives who, frankly, have lost their minds uh, and who really don't make any sense whatsoever. Because uh, I know lots of black conservatives, but I know, I know a lot of them with brains, unlike these two who are on the panel. Uh, you guys see my iPad right now? Okay, all right, y'all. So uh, here's an excerpt of that summit over the weekend. Different than the fear that Trump has exactly. created in poor whites. Exactly. That, that The fear that Trump has lifted in poor whites, yeah. that black people and yeah. poor urban people are their problem. Right. What, when and did so, Trump ever say that? That's, that's, a, that's a fallacy. When did Trump ever say black people are their problem? Make America great again. That's when he said it. Guys, that but was I'm not on the panel. That so was I want Ronald to make Reagan's sure. slogan. Was that racist when Ronald Reagan had it as a slogan? Yes, what time? It was. Yes, let me ask oh, you. So that, well, that please answer this. Racist. Please answer this. I have a question. So, I have a question. So wait, please, wait, wait. Tip, please just tip, allow me this one outburst. Please. I have a question. When you say make America great again, which period are we talking about? The period when women couldn't vote? The period when we were hanging from trees. I'll answer. Or, or, or like the crack era. Which period in America are you trying to I, make America I would, like So I, I actually think that I would I would totally rock a hat right now that said make black America great again. Because black no, America. Make America. Before, we're talking about make America. Hat, that wasn't the question. I, answer, I am answering Which your question. Which period was America great that we're trying to replicate? Well, I, Which era was it? Tell me. I think I'll answer your question. Tell I'm me. I'm ready to answer your question. Which era was it? What? Which era was so great? You, here's the thing that you guys are forgetting. America was actually one of the first. Slavery was all over the world. The all question. over the world. America Man, was, I'm not, I'm not saying it's OK, so why are you saying, oh? Amen. America I was one of the first to, countries. I want to like you question, so bad. I'm trying you're to answer so your question. Smart. I want right, to like you so much. I can't answer the question. I want to hear you. I want to be able to hear them. If, 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 I want to be able to hear them. If I can't answer the question and you're just going to boo when I say a slavery was all over the world, which is a fact, why are you booing a fact? Finish because you're point. making light of no, I'm not. You're making light I of haven't the gotten to my point. I'm not making of people that look like us. You can't All make right. light of that. That ain't nothing you breathe over. I haven't even over. finished the sentence. How am I making you light of anything? You started with some bullshit. Okay. All right, y'all. So let me um, uh, share a few thoughts. Okay. Um, do I believe? in black America, we need to have real, honest, truthful conversations on these issues between black conservatives and black progressives and black liberals and black independents. Yes, I do. But we must have these conversations with real black conservatives, with black people who actually care about the black community. I'll give you an example. On this show, on my TV One show, uh, News One Now, Washington Watch. So going back to 2009, and actually my whole career, I have known a host of black conservatives. Alfonso Jackson, uh, who was, of course, the HUD secretary under uh, President George W. Bush. Michael Williams, who served under Reagan and Bush as well, was the former Texas Education Commissioner. You have Cong former Congressman J.C. Watt. You have Elroy Saylor, who was his chief of staff. You have Angela Saylor, his wife, who's a number two at the Heritage Foundation. Uh, you have uh, Kay uh, Adams, or Kay, of course, who is uh, K uh, Kay Cole, who's over at uh, the Heritage Foundation. I mean, I could go down the line. And let me just be real clear with y'all. Real black conservatives have no respect whatsoever for charlatans like Candace Owens and Katrina Pearson because they know they're fraudulent. 
And see, the reality is those two, they actually won't come to places like this and have real debates. See, what they want is they want that show. What they want is they want the show to be on a stage with a killer mic or a T.I. in front of Diddy and Revolt because, see, that's all they actually care about. They don't actually care about the black community. See, part of the problem here, and Killer Mike addressed it later, and all, I have some issues with him and the N-word and all of that, but I ain't gonna get into that. But part of the problem here is that when you hear people talk about, well, if you slamming Trump, that means you supporting Democrats. No, it means I'm slamming Trump. See, I have no respect for any black conservative who can't call out voter suppression. I have no respect for any black conservative who can't recognize racial gerrymandering. I have no respect when you have black conservatives who don't want to honest, be honest about exactly what's going on. See, see, even if you support Trump and you make an actual argument as to why you support Trump, all right, okay, that's fine. But then when you're unwilling to actually explain that and how it somehow helps the black community, makes no sense to me. I mean, over the weekend, Mark Lamont Hill and others were back and forth with actor Isaiah Washington, who said he's voting for uh, Donald 45 because of his policies. They simply asked what policies benefited black people. And then he's like, well, why are you calling that on Twitter? You should, you should call me directly. And they're like, well, because you posted on Twitter, so we going to ask you on Twitter. Kind of makes sense to me. See, what y'all need to understand, and again, I saw all this back and forth, all this back and forth on social media. Roland, man, you got to talk about it. Man, you got to see this whole deal. Y'all, I've been to those sort of discussions before. And what they are designed, not for us. I dare say for Jeff and for Killer Mike and T.I. and Tamika Mallory, that panel wasn't about show and tell. It wasn't about entertainment. It wasn't about, oh, man, we had that thing going. No, what it actually was about was entertainment. Because, see, that's all they're interested in. They're not actually interested in doing things to improve black America. They want the show. That's what it's all about. And so those of us who do this for a living, we know that game. We know it's all about the show. I remember I was on CNN in 2008 or so. And that was a black pastor who was uh, we were on together. And it was real interesting. We were talking about Reverend Jesse Jackson Sr. and some other stuff along those lines. And while I'm talking to you, I'm actually uh, lo looking for it. And we got into it. And this black pastor um, was, was saying all kind of stuff. And, you know, he was just all hyped. Now, y'all, I knew it was fraudulent. I knew what he was doing. So you know what ended up happening? He then, in the green room, says, man, you know what, we need to get together and do this more uh, because it, it, it's, it's a whole lot of money out here. Did y'all hear what I said? It's a whole lot of money out here. See, you have a group of black folks on the conservative side, who, that's what it's about. Let me just be real clear with y'all. If I chose, with my skill set, with how I debate, with how I communicate, if I chose to be a black, self-hating, slamming black people, touting a conservative agenda, I can tell you right now, I probably will be worth about 20 to $40 million. Let me unpack that. I'll be worth that because... That's what you really have going on here, folks. It's a game. And see, people like Katrina Pearson and people like Candace Owens have no interest in having real discussions with black people about actual policy because they would be exposed for their nonsense, nonsense every single day. See, when you hear all the people right now talk about Trump and the First Step Act, okay, I'll give you an example. At best, it's about 7,000 people. Some say upwards of 20,000 people are going to be impacted by the First Step Act. Nobody has given me a racial breakdown, so all 7,000 to 20,000 are not African American. But let's say it's 60% of the 7,000. All right, 
not a problem. Okay? So what are we talking about? 45, 40, people, maybe about 5,000 people. That's about it, right? You do realize that 90% of people who are in prison are on the state and local level. Now, when Donald Trump touts the First Step Act, when people like Candace Owens and Katrina Pearson tout the First Step Act, what they overlook, or then they, they, they throw in, oh, look at black unemployment. Uh, oh, look at what he's done for HBCUs. Here's what they won't say. They won't say how he wants to get rid of, of the Minority Supply Development Agency. They won't say how Jeff Sessions ordered federal prosecutors to forget uh, the Eric Holder era rules and prosecute to the highest levels. They won't mention Trump reinstated uh, private prisons on the federal level. They won't mention the Department of Justice said we don't want to have any consent decrees. They tried to get out of the one in Baltimore and out of the one in Chicago. They won't mention any of those things. They won't mention the fact that the Department of Justice has done nothing when it comes to enforcing the Voting Rights Act and really dealing with the whole issue of police, uh, police uh, misconduct all across this country. They won't mention the fact that under the Department of HUD, and in housing, uh, health and human services, and in commerce, and in federal, every federal agency, they are rolling back civil rights protections and all of those. So, while, while people like Candace Owens and Katrina Pearson and supporters like that might mention one or two things, I'll over here list 10, 12 things that are detrimental to black folks. They won't address those things. What I need y'all to understand is... And a lot of y'all, and trust me, I've challenged Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens to debate anytime, anywhere. And in fact, Alveda King, uh, I ran into her daughter, I think, uh, in Atlanta at the Rolling Out Summit I was at, where she said she wants to put this thing together. I said, boo, they're not going to debate a brother like me. Because, see, they can't handle this level of heat. I ain't going to bring smoke. I'm going to bring heat. Okay. What they want to do is they want the show. What a Candace wants to do is repeat the same two or three or four talking points. And you heard T.I. say, you know, I want to like you because you're smart. She actually is not smart. She's really not. Because, in fact, I've had black conservatives who have told me. She's called them and said, I don't know much about this policy stuff. Y'all need to know when you're getting played. Y'all need to know when somebody is trying to play the game and gaming you and who they really gaming are those dumb white conservatives who keep throwing money at them saying, that's it, that's it. We found our black one because the reality is, and y'all, and I've, I've seen this, white conservatives have no issue throwing money at black people who are going to say nasty things about black people and tell us, get off the plantation and tired of sitting here uh, being somebody's massa. We all know the game. And so, if y'all enjoyed the conversation, that's great. If you were entertained by it all, that's great. Were there things in that conversation that are worth us talking about and exploring? Absolutely. But if we gonna do this, let's do it with people who are at the table who are real, who are substantive, who know what the hell they're talking about, and who are not just trying to sit here and say stupid stuff because it's all about how can I say the craziest thing and keep getting those checks rolling in the same way Larry Elder has done, the same way Deneen Borelli has done, the same way Jesse Lee Peterson has done, and I can go on and on. And hell, I can name for y'all some of the black people who were liberals who flipped to the conservative side thinking they were going to cash in. And guess what? They even got exposed. Even conservatives were like, okay, yeah, some of y'all are frauds. Game, recognize game. And I just want y'all to understand that. Joining us right now, of course, is Teresa Lundy, principal founder of TML Communications, Dr. Avis Jones, the Weaver political analyst, as well as Mustafa Santiago, a lead former senior advisor, environmental justice EPA. See, I, initially I was, was not going to talk about this. But I need to talk about this because, again, I think, and what happens is, and I get it, and I get it with that crowd, how they responded, and, you know, people sitting here, they were jumping up, and they, they, were, they, were, they were talking about what went on, but I need them to understand what, get that, what the game is. Because I'll show you, I'm going to advance it here, and uh, after T.I. made his comment, uh, go, go to my iPad, uh, I want y'all just to watch the crowd. 
fact. Because you're point. making light of. No, I'm not. You're making light I of the enslavement I'm not of people that look like us. You can't All make right. light of that. That ain't nothing you breeze over. I haven't even over. finished the sentence. How am I making you light of anything? You started with some bullshit. Okay. Theresa, that's what they want. They want the show. And they want to be able to go back to their white conservative friends. See, we went into the enemy territory, and you saw how, saw how we got treated and how the audience were all against us. This is a game. They are not serious about the black community. I think it's two parts to that. I think that entire revolt summit, because I, I also watched it, Right, and I think my, my, and I'm glad you started off with that commentary because it was so important. Because when we start talking about what makes sense for the black agenda and black America and for those who really don't understand what politics or government actually looks like outside of listening to T.I.'s lyrics <laughs> or Killer Mike, and they're just, you know, listening to the impoverished lyrics, but they're not listening and to some of the elected leaders who are coming forth with legislation and different plans, I think more so this panel should have more so touched on the entire detrimental facts that affects black people, right? Because a lot of people don't know, you know, some of those cause and effects. And if they did, I do believe the conversations would be greater and Candace, a woman like Candace Owens wouldn't be able to go to a revolt summit and say, well, I can't really talk about what Trump did because... No, they can't. I mean, they, 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 <laughs> they, 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 Mustafa, they can't talk about the environmental uh, dangers. You can't talk about how he's destroyed the USDA. They can't talk about the scientists who have left. And again, let me be clear. I'm not criticizing the summit. Revolt should be doing it. I'm not, I'm not even criticizing having the conversation. What I'm saying is... It, because let me also be clear. Y'all heard me say on this show, we as black people have to have alliances among black conservatives because if you have, in the case right now, Dems control the House, Republicans control the Senate, all right? The reality is, in a moment, I'm going to be talking with Congresswoman Alma Adams, who is the co-founder of the HBCU caucus, who is, who is the co-chair of that with the Republican in North Carolina, who's white, whose wife is a graduate of Winston-Salem State. So let me be real clear. In states across this country, Republicans control the governor's mansion, the House, and the Senate. Black folks, we are constituents. We need to be having relationships on that side because there are going to be issues where we do agree where we have to work with folks on the other aisle. What I am saying is there are a host of real black conservatives in this country who actually talk to black people, who actually sit with black people, but you have felt like these two, they ain't there to talk with black people. Okay, they're not trying to actually. How do we find common ground with black people? Their whole deal is how loud and how loud and wild can I be mm -hmm. in trumpeting Trump to get folks all mad and excited, and then go back to their uh, safe white spaces and say, "Ooh, see what happened when we went there." They're not serious actually about our community. Exactly. You know, I, I've worked with black conservatives on policy. You know, those who are serious. So you've got that set of folks, but you also have a set of folks that we're talking about who invest in and who support buffoonery. Um, and they like these types of things because it takes people away from the actual impacts that are happening inside of their lives. They want a reaction from you. So imagine if that sister said those type, whatever she was trying to say, and folks were educated in the audience. There probably were educated people who were there. Absolutely. But if folks understood the basic, the, the top five or seven things you need to know around housing, around transportation, around the fact of unemployment. So it's always interesting when we talk about this full employment, but then when you unpack that and right. you see the types of jobs that your people are actually getting and that they've got to work two or sometimes three jobs just to make it to the basic lines, it changes the dynamic of that conversation. And that's what we have to get to. I appreciate the fact that you are always talking about folks need to get educated so that when you utilize your vote, it can actually be directed in the, a positive place that can make change happen. So that's why I don't even get down. You know, people will sell their soul for a few shillings. We've heard that, you know, growing up, and this is just another reflection of, of how they continue to do that. Again, uh, uh, what you're dealing with here is you're dealing with the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
the show is one thing. Serious things, Avis, is another. Mm -hmm. And there are black women who I'm sure in the Black Women's Roundtable y'all work with who are black conservatives. Absolutely. Who are real on policy. Mm -hmm. These two are not real. No, no. Uh, and and this types of, these types of um, incidents expose that greatly. I mean, I would have been interested. I didn't watch the whole thing, so I've only seen this clip a few times. I would be interested, did she ever answer that question? Because even where she was going with that partial answer didn't make sense uh, in that, yes, there you had this transatlantic slave trade that encompassed a lot of the Caribbean, North America, South America, but guess what? America was one of the last, if not the last, uh, nation to end slavery. So I don't even understand why And she's our form was a lot different from other people as well. It was very different yes. in terms of, you know, it was maternally passed down from generation to generation. Our form of slavery was unique and distinctive and especially brutal. And so I don't even know where she, she didn't even know where she was going with that answer. That, that was no example of America being great. Let's just, let's just put that on the table. Yeah. So, you know, I would just be interested in knowing where where she would have ended up with that, it shows her ignorance. But at the end of the day, what you're saying is absolutely true. This is about her being able to get clips like this that go viral so that she can go back to the white folks who are paying her to say, look what I did, now give me some more money. Right. Because that's really what it's about. And again, I, I, I want the audience to understand those of us who have covered these stories for years, we know the game. Y'all, we can see them coming. I'm telling you, I've debated them who will pull you to the side and essentially say, let's take this thing on the road. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's all for a money grab. Mm -hmm. As opposed to those of us who are real about this, who are going, yo, I'm not trying to sit here and roll with you because that's the deal. And in fact, that's the, actually the minstrel show. Mm -hmm. All right? That's why I call out Diamond and Silk. That's a minstrel show. When you see what's the, what the, the comedian Terrence Williams, mm -hmm. that's a minstrel show. That's not about policy. It's a C.J. Pearson running his little mouth. Same thing. Okay, what you're dealing with is you're not dealing with people who are serious. All right, there are black conservatives who I know, who I've interviewed, who I've covered, who are involved in education, who all are involved in housing in different areas, and we might disagree on things, and they abhor voter suppression and some of the things that they do. You want to talk about somebody like a black Republican? Talk about Michael Steele's been on this show mm -hmm. and talked about how he got treated when he was chairman of the Republican National Committee, where they literally had a meeting in Speaker Boehner's office and told him, look, we don't need, we don't need you talking policy. We got that. You don't focus on policy. He's like, wait a minute, what the hell? I'm the chair of the Republican National Committee. <laughs> Did you tell the last chair don't discuss policy? Mm -hmm. It literally told Michael Steele, look, just go on over here. We got this. And then tried to, tried to change the rules where he couldn't spend any... He had to get permission to spend money over $5,000. Wow. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Michael told me. So, in, in fact, y'all, they were so foul in 2012 at the Republican National Convention in Tampa, Rice Priebus, they had an event honoring previous Republican National Committee chairs and didn't even invite Michael Steele. Wow. Didn't even give him credentials to the convention. He had to get his credentials through MSNBC. Just so y'all wow. understand. Wow. And they talking about, she talking about plantation. Just so y'all understand. Wow. <laughs> it's the game. So what I'm trying to explain to y'all is, wow. again, when you see people like this here, it's all about the show. Now, you might say, well, Roland, why would you want to debate Candace Owens? Because I believe you expose fraudulent folk at all times. Mm -hmm. Because, see, when light hits darkness, darkness gets exposed. Mm -hmm. Y'all, they don't want real debates because they can't handle real conversation. Mm -hmm. They can't handle somebody who's going to be calm and not yelling and dropping facts on them and bringing real information. If they have to answer, no, what they desire is for us to play the game. So just so y'all understand that, the reality is, in this world, there are two political parties, Republicans and Democrats. The reality is, we as black people have to be working on black interests. And that might mean working with Democrats or working with Republicans. That might mean opposing Democrats and opposing Republicans. I'm not against Republicans. What I am are against buffoonery mm. coming out 
of the black Republican side. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, you heard me talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We've all watched the growth of the cannabis industry, folks. A re recent report by the New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market more than $340 billion. And we know that marijuana legalization is sweeping the country state by state. We also know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, that all changed with the 2018 Farm Bill, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S., creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. They need land to grow all the plants. Folks, this is real simple, okay? And the folks at 420 Real Estate have a business model where they buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. That's right, there are hemp CBD landlords. You can get in on the action now. Now, of course, our folks at 420 Real Estate decided to do something special for the Roland Martin Unfiltered family. Originally, the minimum investment level was 500 bucks. Now you can get in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as $200, up to $10,000, okay? This is a growth industry that is still growing. If you want to invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.